bulletins out if you have them from Sunday. Um, I guess the one thing that I uh, wanted to discuss tonight was we have a work day scheduled for Saturday. Um, I know that something has come up and, and Rich is not going to be here. I know that the weather is supposed to be quite miserable um, and that we intended that the majority of the work that we were going to do was going to be outside. So um, for your discussion and consideration, should we consider postponing that a week to the following week, which would be Saturday the 16th? 16th. Otto makes a motion that we move it away. <laughs> Say again. Yeah, I. I hate to roll over easy, but um, you know I think the reality is it's probably a, a challenging environment. Uh, I also think between the pastor, myself, and Peter, we have injected enough confusion as to the start time. Because the pastor said one time last week, I said another time last Sunday, and then last Sunday evening, Peter reverted back to the pastor's time. Um, any objections? So the conversation I had with Rich was, if the pastor less left us in charge, he has to accept whatever decisions we collectively make, right? Um, now that what that would have to do is we would have to activate the the uh, call roster to make sure everyone knows because the ladies are prepared to prepare lunch um, and um, certainly some of the men that would have considered it to come out and work um, you know aren't here tonight and wouldn't otherwise get the word so is that a decision that we postpone by one week and make that the seven I said the seventeenth or sixteenth. 16th. All you got to do is add seven days to the date that's there. Okay, um, so we'll do that. And if we could make sure that the... Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, so we'll change that to the 16th of April. We will begin work at 0830 on the 16th. If the pastor's willing to come in and work that early, you know I'm already going to be up for three or four hours. Okay. Um, you'll see the other announcements there. No changes since Sunday. Um, note that we do have a business vision meeting um, this Sunday, and that means that choir practice is going to be a little bit early. And as the rest of you can attest, Joe is exactly 12 minutes late because he would have saved you from some suffering. Um, and on uh, Sunday the 17th, we're doing communion in the morning services. Uh, Rich and Sherry have that preparation. Anything else in terms of announcements or order of business? Okay. So let's move on to prayer requests. What new prayer requests do we have this evening? Anything that has come up recently? Um, we will always pray for Mr. Caleb. Do we know anything else, Louise? He's still pretty stable right now. They still haven't decided what they're going to do. And, and stable's good, but stable also can reduce the urgency to put them on the list as well, right? So if, if that's the uh, the path to permanent healing, then, you know, that they could be delayed. Off, so Any other prayer requests this evening? Yes, sure. To see if they can find anything else. On his spot, on his pancreas, okay.
Miss Ruth? Anyone else? Um, Isabel's girlfriend, Rhonda, we've, we've prayed for her before, and she's visited us uh, here in the church before. Called her tonight, and she's having a biopsy. Did she have a date when they were going to do that? But she knows she has to have a biopsy because there's uh, been tissue that they've been watching for a while, and while that particular whether it's a cyst or it's a growth, uh, it's not behaving differently, but the tissue around it is swelling, and it's behaving differently, so they're going to biopsy it. Okay, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. <clears throat> Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for allowing us to come and assemble in this house uh, to worship you today, Father. Um, we thank you for the privilege to bring the burdens of our heart to you in prayer. Father, we begin tonight by asking for continued traveling mercies as the pastor and Carolyn return back tomorrow. Uh, Father, and for the Fairmans, if, if they're still out, we know that they were also traveling for memorial services. Uh, Father, we also pray that in both of those situations that uh, the Holy Spirit just continues to provide uh, comfort and encouragement during these periods of loss. Father, we pray for, uh, we continue to pray for young Caleb. Uh, Father, we thank you that he has remained stable. Uh, Father, we just thank you that um, you have provided the opportunity for um, the medical staff to continue to, to um, bring him along and, and uh, find the path to stability so that they can do this, these next procedures. Father, we just ask that, that your hand continue to be in that um, Father, so that he can be healed in whatever manner um, is your will. Uh, Father, just please know that it's the desire of our own hearts that, that you heal him. Father, we pray for Howard as he has these next scheduled tests on the 15th. Uh, Father, we just ask that you give Howard comfort. Uh, Father, you um, just allow the medical staff to use the wisdom and the skills that you've provided them. Uh, in order to, to heal him and, and treat him. Father, we praise you for uh, the outcome of Dan's knee surgery today, and we just ask that you be with him as he continue to heal uh, and to strengthen him. Father, we also pray for Rhonda tonight. Uh, Father, with her upcoming biopsy, we just ask that they, uh, we ask that uh, there not be any condition that need to be treated, Father, but if there is, we just ask that your will be done in it as well. And Father, we now ask that you just prepare our hearts for the message that we're about to hear. Uh, Father, and help me to, to speak uh, wisdom from your word without any interjection of my own. Father, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So, very uncharacteristically, you can see I gave you a gift tonight. It's an exam. So we're going to score all papers on your way out. Make sure that you get them right. What is the most epic Christmas movie that we all look forward to seeing? It's a Wonderful Life. Absolutely. So I can remember as a kid seeing bits and pieces of that movie all the time. And of course, it was in black and white, so I had absolutely no interest in actually sitting down and watching it. Um, but the first time I, I watched that movie from beginning to end, was uh, Christmas of 2001. Christmas of 2001, I was in Kosovo. And one of the, uh, my fellow soldiers there, who was a big, mean, rough Army Ranger, Special Forces qualified guy, the one thing that he wanted us to do as a group on Christmas Day was watch It's a Wonderful Life. So I very reluctantly uh, sat down and watched that movie, and since then, it has become one of my favorite Christmas movies. I look forward to seeing it every year. Um, but in that movie, there's, um, there's an angel, right? And you'd have to, you know, we have to admit that kind of the representation of the angel there, of, 
of an old man in a nightshirt trying to earn his wings by helping uh, a human on earth is probably not exactly right. Um, but there actually is just a little bit of, of truth in that. Um, but that brings to questions, or brings to, to question, uh, what are angels? What are the purposes of angels? And what is the significance of them in, in the Bible? Um, and often, the best way to study and understand something is to study it in relationship to something that you know. So turn your Bibles tonight, if you would, to Hebrews chapter 1. Hebrews chapter 1. And we're going to study um, this topic a little bit tonight. You can see from your outline sheets that the name of the lesson is Christ greater than the angels. Hebrews chapter 1, and we'll start in verse 4 and read through verses from verse 4 through 14. <clears throat> and the Bible says, speaking of Christ, being made so much better than the angels, as he hath by inheritance obtained a more excellent name than they. For unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be, and I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. And of the angels he saith, who maketh his angels spirits and his, min and his ministers a flame of fire. But unto the Son he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. And, and thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth a garment. And as a venture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed, but thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them? who shall be heirs of salvation. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word, and we thank you for the message and the wisdom that you provide us in each and every passage of it. Father, we just ask that you bless this discussion and study this evening. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. So verse 4 says, so much better than the angels. What we're going to do tonight is we're going to go through the rest of this passage and look closely at the specifics of how Christ is better than the angels. Um, and the intent, again, is that we'll get a better understanding of, of really what the angels, the purpose of the angels are and who they are, uh, if we can compare and contrast uh, to Christ himself. So let's look at verse 5. Verse 5 said again, But for unto which of the angels said he at any time, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. And again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. Put your finger there. We're going to continue to come back to Hebrews chapter 1 and turn quickly to Psalm chapter 2. Psalm chapter 2 and verse 7. And the Bible says, I will, declare, I will declare the decree. The Lord hath said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. So in both verse 4 of Hebrews chapter 1 and in Psalms uh, chapter 2, 7, God declares Christ to be his begotten son. He is not only the begotten son, but we know that he is God's only begotten son. No other man or being is declared to be begotten of God. Uh, we are his children through salvation, but no one else, prophet, king, or angel, 
has been declared to be the begotten Son of God. So now, in your sheets, on the left-hand column under Christ, just go ahead and write in the Son of God. And if you want to put uh, the reference there, it's verse 5. Let's look now at verse 6. Verse 6 says, And again, when he bringeth in the first begotten into the world, he saith, And let all the angels of God worship him. Turn your Bibles, if you would, to Psalm 103. Psalms 103, verses 19 and 20. One o three. Psalm 103, verses 19 and 20. The Lord hath prepared his throne in the heaven, and his kingdom ruleth over all. Bless the Lord, O bless the Lord, ye his angels that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. So the angels, in both of these passages, it tells us that the angels hearken unto the voice of God and do all that he commands. Um, men are not to worship angels. We're to worship the one and only true God. And the angels worship that same one and only true God. That's why... Uh, so the angels worship him too. Um, this is what we know Satan could not humble himself to do. He rebelled because he refused to humble himself to the authority and the commandments of God. He wanted to be greater than God. And this is where we get our own rebellious spirit. Mankind doesn't reject God because we don't want the blessings or the promises that he provides us. And we don't reject God because we don't want to live in eternity uh, in the glory of heaven with him. Man rejects God because we refuse to subject ourselves to his authority today. We want to be our own man or woman. We are prideful and refuse to allow anyone to rule over us. Well, we all know that, that God does and will rule over us, and he will certainly reserve the final judgment over us. So now, um, based on those passages, again in your left-hand column, write, uh, worshipped by angels. Christ is worshipped by angels. And in the right-hand column, the angels are worshippers of Christ. Let's look now at verse 7, again in Hebrews chapter 1. Verse 7 reads, And of the angels he saith, Who maketh his angels spirits, and his ministers a flame of fire? He maketh his angels ministering spirits. While we do not know when God created the angels, this verse, and later in verse 14, we know that they were created to be messengers of God and to minister to his children. So turn your Bibles now to Zechariah in chapter 1. Zechariah in chapter 1. Don't challenge me. I know I'm in the neighborhood. Zechariah in chapter 1. And I promise I'm going to quit turning pages before all of you do. Uh, chapter 1 and verses 12 through 16. Zechariah chapter 1, verses 12 through 16. Then the angel of the Lord answered and said, O Lord of hosts, how long wilt thou not have mercy on Jerusalem and on the cities of Judah, against which thou hast had indignation these threescore and ten years? And the Lord answered, and the Lord answered the angel that talked with me with good words and comfortable words. So the angel that communed with me said unto me, Cry thou, saying, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I am jealous for Jerusalem and for Zion with a great jealousy. And I am very sore displeased with the heathen that are at ease. For I was but a little displeased, and they helped 
forward the affliction. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, I am returned to Jerusalem with mercies, my house shall be built in it. Saith the Lord of hosts, and a line shall be stretched forth upon Jerusalem. Um, so we see in that passage that an angel of the Lord was sent to communicate a message and instruction that was coming directly from God. We also know that in Matthew 1 and Luke chapter 2, an angel of the Lord appears to Joseph and Mary to tell them that the child that Mary is carrying is the Son of God and will become the Savior of mankind. Turn your Bibles now to Psalm chapter 34, or Psalm number 34. Psalm 34 and verse 7. And the Bible says, The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him and delivereth them. So he encamps, uh, the angel of the Lord encamps around those who fear God. Psalm 91. Psalm 91 and verses 11 and 12. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. So the Bible tells us that God sends his angels to both be messengers to um, the faithful and also to protect his people. This is not just a theoretical protection or encouragements that angels provide, um, but they have also, um, the Bible also tells us that they provide physical protection as well. So now in the right column, under angels, you can fill in three additional bullets. Spirits with the ability to appear in the flesh. The Bible says that angels are spirits but we know that they appear uh, as if they are flesh to man when they do so. The next bullet, also under angels, is they are the messengers of God. And then finally, the next bullet is protectors of God's children. But just as we know that angels are spirits who can appear in the flesh, we also know that Christ was physically born of Mary, he physically walked and physically died here on earth. So while he died in the flesh, he, we also know that he was resurrected in the flesh. So in the left-hand column under Christ, um, you can put born, lived, died, and was resurrected in the flesh. And then find your way back to Hebrews chapter 1. Again in chapter 1, now verses 8 and 9. And the Bible says, But under the sun he saith, Thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. A scepter of righteousness is the scepter of thy kingdom. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, hath anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Again, it says, unto the Son, he saith, thy throne, O God, is forever and ever. So we know that Christ will rule over the earth uh, in his second coming, but this verse also acknowledges that he will rule on the throne in heaven forever and ever. So in the, the column to the left, under Christ, you can put ruler of heaven and earth. Ruler of heaven and earth. Still in Hebrews chapter 1, now let's look at verses 10 through 12. Verse 10 says, And thou, Lord, in the beginning hast laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the works of thine hands. They shall perish, but thou remainest, and they all shall wax old as doth arraignment. I'm sorry, a garment, as doth a garment. 
And as a vesture shalt thou fold them up, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall not fail. Turn your Bibles now to Psalm 102. Psalm 102 and verses 25 through 28. Verses 25 through 28. Of old hast thou laid the foundation of the earth, and the heavens are the work of thy hands. They shall perish, but thou shalt endure. Yea, all of them shall wax old like a garment. As a vesture shalt thou change them, and they shall be changed. But thou art the same, and thy years shall have no end. The children of thy servants shall continue, and their seed shall be established before thee. Because Christ is also God, he has always been. He participated in the creation of the earth. He is the same as he has always been and will always be. So although the works of his, of his creation will perish, he shall endure without change forever. Unlike Christ, who has always been, angels are created beings. Um, the Bible tells us, and I can't remember the passage right now, but the Bible tells us um, that men were created a little lower than angels. Uh, but it also tells us that the angels were cr the creation of God. So in the column under Christ, you can put creator. And in the column under angels, you can put created. Christ was the creator, and the angels were created. Again, in Hebrews chapter 1, hopefully you kept your finger there so you don't have to keep finding it each time, but that's good practice too. Hebrews chapter 1, and now in verse 13 says, But to which of the angels said he at any time, Sit on my right hand until I make thine enemies thy footstool? Christ sits at the right hand of God. So he is the co-ruler over all things. And we may suffer temptations and consequences of sin here on earth. I lost my place. So he is co-ruler over all things. Ah, yes. So we may suffer the, the temptations and the consequences of sin here on earth because of the destructive influence of Satan. But Satan will one day be forced to submit himself at the feet of Christ. Um, and that's in verse, in verse 13, which says, I will make thine enemies thy footstool. Men and women who reject the Lord while on earth, will also be forced to submit themselves to the Lord. As I said before, you know, one of the, the primary reasons that we reject Christ on, on earth is that we refuse to submit ourselves. But um, we will be subjected at the day of judgment. All will be subjected. Just as Satan will one day be forced to submit himself at the feet of Christ, Men and women who reject the Lord here on earth will also be forced to submit to the Lord. All of the Lord's enemies one day will sit at his feet subject to the judgment of a ruler over the ruled, and after their judgment will be their destruction. In the uh, column to the left, you can put eternal ruler and final judge. eternal ruler and final judge. Now verse 14, again in Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, Are they not all ministering spirits sent forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation? 
In contrast to being the ruler over all things, here the Bible says again that the angels are ministering spirits to the saved, to the heirs of salvation. Turn your Bibles now to 1 Kings. First Kings in chapter 19. First Kings chapter 19 and verses 3 through 7. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life. I'm sorry, we're talking about Elijah here. And when he saw that, he arose and went for his life and came to Beersheba, which belongeth to Judah, and left his servant there. And he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a juniper tree. And he requested for himself that he might die and said, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am not better than my father's. And as he lay and slept under a juniper tree, Behold, then an angel touched him, and said unto him, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was a cake, bacon on the coals, and a cruise of water at his head. And he did eat and drink, and laid him down again. And the angel of the Lord came again the second time, and touched him, and said, Arise and eat, because the journey is too great for thee. So again, here we see an angel was sent by God to care for the prophet Elijah. Um, and this really gets to my point previously that the protection and the ministering that the angels do can be real physical ministering as well as it was here in, in the case of Elijah. And uh, when I made the point earlier about man being created a little lower than angels, because angels minister to us, it doesn't mean that they are servants of man, right? Um, think of Christ when he washed the feet of the disciples. It certainly wasn't because he was the servant to his disciples, but he humbled himself. And quite frankly, um, you know, the best leaders, those who are more senior, um, often minister, they govern over us, but their purpose is to serve us. So that illustration of the angels ministering to us does not make them less than the saved man. But it is their role within uh, God's plan to be ministers to us. It's wonderful and comforting to know that, that God sends his angels to minister and care for us. But we also need to remember that the Lord sent his son to not only minister to us, but to save us. So under the angels column, you can put ministers to God's children. And under the column for Christ you can put Savior of God's children. So now let's take a look at your sheets. In the, um, let's review this. Under Christ, you should have the following. The Son of God, worshipped by angels, Born, lived, died, and resurrected in the flesh. Ruler of heaven and earth. Creator. Eternal ruler and final judge. And then finally, savior of God's children. Does anyone have any empty bullets in the left-hand column? If not, chances are you will pass the test. In the right-hand column, under angels, you should have worshipers of Christ, spirits with the ability to appear in the flesh, messengers of God, protectors of God's children, created, and finally, ministers to God's children. Does anyone have any empty bullets in the right-hand column? <laughs> I think Gene has exactly the same sheet of paper that Michael handed to him. 
Um, but hopefully this was a helpful illustration. Um, sometimes, as I said, comparative studies are very effective in, in understanding specifically uh, another concept or a, another thought or idea. Um, and as we, you know, the uh, media and movies and, and whatnot can give us a certain picture of angels. Um, we know that there are different faiths who worship angels. Um, but as one of God's creation, and actually a, a very specific part of God's plan relative to us, I think it's important that we understand exactly why God created angels, uh, what their purpose was, and what that means to us. And, and what that means is that he has provided, um, certainly in the days of the prophets, um, a messenger from him. Um, I would say that, you know, it's not impossible that, that angels could appear and be messengers to man today. Um, that doesn't, I'm not saying that that will happen or should happen, but it certainly could. Uh, and also to minister to us. You know, um, we've often talked about when you have a, a need that needs to be fulfilled, and then somehow it seems to be very uh, simple, but God actually provides in very miraculous ways. Um, you know, if, if um, one of you ladies uh, get a flat tire and you're sitting along the, the highway and, you know, your AAA membership just expired last month and some good Samaritan stops to change your tire, it's very simple to believe that, you know, some guy just stopped by. Um, but who touched his heart or put him in that place at that time in order to do that? Uh, God often works in our lives through one another. Um, and as the Bible tells us, uh, he can work in our lives through angels as well, whether that's protection that we never really recognize or whether that's simply speaking to our hearts. Let us cl close in prayer. Our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the text of your word, Father. We thank you for the wisdom and the instruction that every verse uh, in this Bible provides us, Father. Uh, we thank you for the gift and the blessing that you provide to man and in the way of angels. Uh, Father, we just thank you for the incredible way that it's just another part of your plan, Father, that we could never imagine, uh, but we benefit from the blessings of each and every day. Father, we ask that you bless uh, each one who is here tonight. Father, we just ask that you continue to, to touch us uh, as we walk in this world, Father, touch our daily lives and the physical blessings and needs that we desire, Father. Uh, but most importantly, Father, we just ask that the Holy Spirit continue to speak to our hearts and that your word give us the guidance and the wisdom that we need for each and every day. Father, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And just a reminder, we are not having a work day this Saturday. It will be the following Saturday. Yeah, so great point. Does anyone?